Hello, hello. Welcome and good evening. So here we are basically getting closer a little bit more to the end of the course. Uh, for this evening, we're going to be working on some of the last topics that we have available, which are going to be related to pronunciation of some um, things in the past. And uh, also, well, we're going to be having a lot of reading. So I hope you are going to be ready to, to do some reading because that's going to be a very, very important part of tonight's class. Now, apart from the reading, of course, we have more um, past related topics. However, probably that's not gonna take us too long because yesterday I remember I was explaining some of those situations. Therefore, I am not planning on spending a lot of time um, only talking about that. Um, for now, I think I'm going to take a minute before I go ahead and ask the common question for the evening, because, uh, yeah, you guys, some of you are, are, are a little bit late. Therefore, I'm going to give it a little bit of time. But tonight, I do want to ask the question because I want to hear you, um, you know, participating. However, I think we're going to have to start now because we already have three people. So that's enough um, for us to have more people coming over. Now, before that, I also want to mention that we're going to be working on some summer activities or things that we can do during the summer. Um, these are mainly verbs that we use to refer to things that we do during the summer. But yeah, we're going to have to work on that too. And um, pronunciation as i mentioned in the beginning pronunciation for some negative statements in the past and in the present how we're going to pronounce them and why some of them sound as um one syllable and also why some others sound as if they are two syllables therefore those are the main things we're going to be working um the most important as i said is going to be the reading part we're also going to be having to cover some topics tomorrow. So we're not going to be finishing the platform or the platform work this evening, but tomorrow. Okay, so hope you guys are doing great. Um, now, the question that I'm going to ask you tonight is relatively simple. It's not going to be anything too hard to answer. Um, and it's related to preferences, things that you like, things that you um, have experienced or things that simply are good for you or things you, you know, prefer to do or, or experience. So the question is, what is your favorite either movie, series, or book? Movie, series, or book. Cualquiera de las tres. No estoy diciendo que van a contestar las tres, ok, sino que cualquiera de las tres. El motivo es porque no me gusta ser cerrado con esa pregunta, porque, por ejemplo, en muchas ocasiones les pregunto cuál es su película favorita y me dicen, no, 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 películas, casi solo series. Así que por eso de una vez les pregunto, ¿verdad? Which one is your favorite? Movie, series, or book. Okay, I'm going to start by asking Rebecca. Tell me, Rebecca, what is your favorite movie, series, or book? O sea, cualquiera de las tres puede mencionar. Mm. Um. Mm, I think Propers um, Business algo así es Korea, una serie coreana. Oh, okay, okay. Propers of, of Business. I don't know about that one. Maybe my sister does, but I don't know it personally. But okay, nice. Very good. Mm -hmm. So a Korean series. Good, good, good. Thank you. Um, How about, okay, Jose, tell me. I prefer a movie. Okay, and tell me, uh, what is your my, favorite movie? My favorite movie is Seven. It's movie, uh, it's, it's, uh, no, uh, with, with mm -hmm. Morgan Freeman uh, and Brad Pitt. You said Seven. Seven, Seven. Seven with Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. I don't remember that one. Honestly, I don't. But okay, seven. Nice. 
Uh, how about the case for Alfredo? Tell me, Alfredo, what is your favorite movie, uh, series, or book? Hello, Alfredo. Are you there? Oh, there we go. Uh, hello, see. Sí. Uh, my favorite movie, <laughs> in reality, really, really, is, it's Ben Hur. <laughs> ben Hur. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I have seen it before. Ben Hur. Very nice. Yeah, that's, I think it's a, it's a good movie. Good. Very, very good. Thank you very much. Um, how about Adriana? What is your favorite movie, series, or book? Well, my favorite movie is SpongeBob because his laughing is very contagious. Okay, because of the laughing. Great, yeah. And which one would it be? The, the, the old one or the new one? La vieja o la nueva? The two. Oh, okay. Both of them? That's all right. No problem. I'll take it. Nice. Uh, how about Juan? What is your favorite movie, series, or book, Juan? Good evening, my favorite series. I think the Supernatural is very interesting. It's about hunters. Uh, it's a field to go there, hunt in many monsters. It's like fantasy. Okay. Yeah, as far, as far as it's entertaining, you know, it's it's good. So, very nice. Nice, nice, nice. Nice to know. Thank you for sharing. And uh, the last but not least, Marco. How about you, Marco? What is your favorite movie, series, or book? Uh, well, my favorite series is Breaking Bad. Mm. It's breaking Bad because you see how a good person become no became uh, practically a psycho who manipulates everyone. So it's very good. Series. Yeah, I have heard many good references about Breaking Bad. Uh, my sister wants to watch it, so I think if she starts watching it, I might join her. So. Yeah, I have heard many, many good things about Breaking Bad. Nice. Very good. Now, one little thing is that very few people, muy pocas personas, a menos que digan que la Biblia es su libro favorito, pero muy pocas personas cuando hago esa pregunta mencionan un libro. Casi, o sea, son contados. But yeah, in my case, I have to say that I must be very, very honest with you guys. I used to read a lot. Nowadays, I don't read as much, but I used to read a lot, lot, lot. Um, but yeah, my favorite series of books is the books of, um, the Hunger Games. So those are like my favorite series of books. And if I have to pick one of my favorite books or my favorite book, I will have to say that the Hunger Games Catching Fire will be like my, my favorite book, but you know, that's only for taste, you know, yeah, as far as things are entertaining, I think we are all right with whatever, uh, we prefer to do with our free time. So very good. It's nice to know a little bit more about you guys. As I said, we're going to go straight into the last couple of topics. Tomorrow, we're going to be finishing them off, completing the work with uh, the rest of the topics. And the first one, the first topic that we're going to be having to be covered uh, this evening is summer activities. We have here a list of things that we can do. However, we can pair them with these verbs. Sí, tenemos estas actividades acá. Estas son algunas de las actividades comunes, digamos, que se pueden realizar durante el verano. Y acá están los verbos con los cuales podemos emparejar estas actividades. No todos estos verbos van bien con estas actividades. Por ejemplo, si yo digo, go hiking, that works properly. O sea, significa, ¿verdad?, que vamos a ir en una caminata. O si no, go swimming, the same. We're going to go to take a swim. So, those are uh, good pairs. 
How about have? Con el verbo have, ¿cuál creen ustedes que puede ser las actividades? Primero voy a leer las actividades también. Eh, serían a class, fun, a movie, new people, old friends, a picnic, pictures, a play, um, sorry, then we have tennis and volleyball. Okay, so with have, what would be the best uh, like word you will place here with have? Okay, a Alfredo. Picnic. Oh, thank you very much. A picnic. Have a picnic. Nice. Alfredo, what's, what was your uh, idea? Nice. <laughs> Esa. Esa, picnic. Sí. Ok, pero ¿cuál podría ser otra? ¿Cuál creen que puede ser la otra? Have. Uh, no. uh -huh. A class. No necesariamente. Cierto que significa en español, ¿verdad? Tener una clase, pero eh, no es ese el verbo que se utiliza. Sería aquí más bien have fun. Sí, que eso significa pues divertirse, ¿verdad? Have fun. Oh. Yes, have fun. So those are activities that you can do during the summer, you know, you can have fun. Te pueden divertir durante el verano. Ok, la siguiente sería el verbo meet. Uh, so what can we meet during the summer? A ver, voy a ir borrando también. Oh, no, espérenme. Aquí tengo. Ok, so here we have it. Uh, so we take out of this a picnic. And we also take out of it a... Uh, fun. All right. So meet, meet what? A new people. Okay. Meet new people. All right. So meet new people. And what else can we meet? Meet new people and meet? Old friends. Old friends. Muy bien. Meet old friends. Sí. O sea, que aquí estamos hablando acerca de conocer. El primero se entenderá, ¿verdad? Con el significado. Este mí tiene dos interpretaciones. Entonces, el primero se entiende con conocer a nuevas personas. Y la otra interpretación para este verbo sería encontrarse. ¿Sí? Encontrarse o reunirse. Entonces, encontrarse o reunirse con viejos amigos. So, during the summer you can meet new people, conocer nuevas personas. Or meet old friends, encontrarse con viejos amigos. The next one is play. What things play. can we play during the play. summer? Tennis. Okay. I will get it just in a moment. All right. Play tennis and what else? And volleyball. Okay. Volleyball. Very good. Play tennis and also play bowling. Yes. Play volleyball. Great, great, great. Those are very good options. Very nice. We're going to see if we can make it work at the end. Uh, I'm going to just take out these two, tennis and volleyball. All right. So we only have a class, a movie, pictures, and a play. How is it going to work? Well, we're, we'll see. Now, see. ¿Qué podemos yeah. see? See yeah, a movie. Okay. See a movie. A movie. And what else can we see? Picture. Picture. Perdón, ¿cuál? Picture. Picture. Pictures. Hmm. Aquí sí les voy a tener que ayudar, creo. Eh, sería a play. play. Sí. A, a play. play. Oh. ¿Saben qué significa play en este contexto? Un juego. Un juego. No. no. Aquí en este contexto significa una obra. Sí, una obra, o sea, ver eh, la presentación en un teatro. Entonces, eso sería, si a play, sería básicamente cuando podemos ir al teatro, ¿verdad? Y ver una obra. Así que a eso se referiría. Y aquí entonces, por último, vamos a tener nada más, take, um, ok, tenemos, sacamos estas dos de acá. Ahora vamos a tener solo take a class and take a picture, pictures, sí, take a class, o sea, que sería tomar clases. Eh, tal vez no sea lo más divertido en el verano, pero hay personas que tienen que hacerlo. So take a class and also take pictures. Sí, tomar fotos. Con las demás veníamos súper, súper bien. Entonces sería, go hiking or go swimming. O sea, nos referimos, ¿verdad?, a ir de caminata o a nadar. 
have a picnic and have fun, ¿sí? Tener un picnic o divertirse. Meet new people or meet old friends. Eh, conocer nuevas personas o encontrarse con viejos amigos. Play tennis and volleyball. Eso es bastante fácil de entender, ¿verdad? Jugar tenis o jugar volleyball. Then we have see a movie or a play. Ver una película o una obra o una, sí, una obra teatral. Luego tenemos take a class or pictures. ¿sí? Tomar una clase o fotografías. Así que estas serían algunas de las actividades eh, que se pueden hacer en el verano. Ahora, ustedes, de todas estas actividades, cuando tienen vacaciones, ¿cuál pueden ser algunas de las actividades que ustedes realizan en vacaciones? Let's hear from um, Carlos. What would be some of the activities taken from here that you normally have um, during, during your vacations? Um, uh, see a movie. Okay, you see, go see a movie. Uh, only. <laughs> That's the um, only thing? See, the only, see a movie. Okay, so see a movie. Great. At least, you know, you have one activity. Uh, how about the case for um, Alfredo? What are some of the things or some of the activities that you do during the summer or during your vacation from this list? Really, I'll... Nothing. Ninguna de estas. <laughs> no. Nos salimos a no. caminar, no jugamos nada, no vemos películas. Nada. Eh. I see. Okay. So no nos vemos. No. no vamos a nadar, no vamos a la playa, nada en las vacaciones, al lago. No. no. Probably. Probably, yeah, you can go swimming. So that will be another sure. of the activities you can practice during your vacation. Yeah. Um, how about you, uh, Rebecca? What will be some of the activities that you practice from this list on your vacations? Mm, swimming. Okay, you go swimming. Is that the only one? No movies, no... Uh, probably meeting with all friends, encontrarse con amigos, or anything else? Only swimming? Uh, yes, uh, all friends. Okay, nice. So maybe meeting all friends. Good. Uh, how about the case for Juan? What are some of the activities from this list, Juan, that you practice during your vacation? Or vacations? Uh, see a movie. Uh, okay. All right, nice, very good. At least we have, you know, some, some activities. Um, Kevin, how about you, Kevin? What are some of the activities from here that you practice during your vacation? I hiking, uh, ride motorcycle, and play video games. Okay, great. So you included some apart from them. Nice, very nice. So hiking, ride motorcycle, and play video games. And uh, let's hear from Liliana, from you, Lily. What will be some of the activities that you practice uh, from this list? Um, meet all friends. Okay. See, see a movie. Okay, meet all friends and see a movie. Good, good, good. Yeah. You know, you have some activities then. Very nice. Uh, in my case, when I have vacations, well, I like to take, make the most out of it. So I like to go hiking. If I have the chance, I also like to go swimming. I enjoy having fun. Um, don't do any of these. I don't necessarily meet new people or, or old friends. I most of the time see a movie. And uh, yeah, I also take pictures. I don't, don't take pictures of myself, but I myself, sorry. But I like to take pictures of like landscapes that I can see. So, very good. Muy bien. Tenemos entonces esto, algunas actividades, ¿verdad? Que podemos realizar durante el verano. Ahora, esto otro, si es algo que vamos a practicar todos básicamente este día. Solo que recuerdo que aquí creo que se va a ver mejor. 
Sí, hoy sí vamos a leerlo básicamente todo, eh, la mayor cantidad que podamos, porque es una de las actividades más importantes, como les he comentado en algunas ocasiones, ¿verdad? A mí me gusta eh, darle en algún momento un poco de énfasis a lo que es la lectura, porque es una de las, de las eh, habilidades que menos se practican en realidad en inglés. Entonces, eh, esta noche pues vamos a dedicarnos un poco a esto, o sea, vamos a tener el chance al menos algunos siete de nosotros, sí, para poder leerlo. Si el tiempo fuese abundante, pues entonces vamos a tener el chance todos, pero ya vamos a ver, ¿verdad?, cómo vamos con cuestiones de tiempo. Entonces, tenemos estos tres párrafos, son solamente tres párrafos, son bastante cortos, ninguno de ellos muy complicado, y voy a darles el ejemplo de cómo deberían sonar, ¿verdad? Eh, claro, por favor, presten atención, si en algún momento tienen alguna duda de cómo se pronuncia algo específico de lo que acá se menciona, no tengan ningún reparo en preguntar, porque básicamente para eso estamos, ¿verdad? Para poder colaborar. So, we have three people. We have Kelly, Robert, and Erin. A ver, Kelly. I had a great weekend. I went to my best friend Helen's wedding. She got married at home. All her friends and family went. She looked fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress. After the ceremony, her parents served a wonderful meal. I'm really happy for her. I really like her husband. Robert, I had an awful weekend. My friends and I went to a rock concert. I had a terrible time. It took there, it took three hours to drive there. I didn't like the music at all. And after the concert ended, our car broke down. I called my parents and they came and got us. We finally got home at 10 this morning. I am so tired. Erin, I had an interesting weekend. I went camping for the first time. My friends took me. We left on Saturday and drove to the campsite. First, we put up the tent. Then we built a fire, cooked dinner, and told stories. We got up early on Sunday and went fishing. I caught a fish. I didn't really like camping, but I learned a lot. Muy bien, esos son entonces los tres párrafos que vamos a leer. Quisiera saber así de forma voluntaria quién se atreve a leer los primeros. O sea, no les voy a estar diciendo al principio, ¿verdad? Así que, uh, ok, Rebeca, when you feel ready, you can go ahead and read them. Vamos a hacer los tres hoy, ¿ok? Kelly. I had a great weekend. I went to my best friend Helen's with within. She got married and home. All her friends and family went. She looked fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress after the ceremony. Her parents served a wonderful meal. I'm really happy. For her, and I really like her husband. husband. Mm -hmm. Okay, el siguiente. Robert, I had an awful weekend. My friend and I went to a rock concert. I had a terrible time at, at took three hours to drive. There. I think I didn't I didn't didn't make the music at all and after the concert end, ended huh? our car broke broke down I called my parents and they come and go we got home ya no veo ahí. Oh, at 10 this morning. Sí, I'm so tired. Muy bien, el siguiente. I had an, I had an I interesting weekend. I went camping for the first time. My friend took me. We left on Saturday and drove to the campsite. First, we Put up the tent, then we 
bull we bought built, fire built a fire built fire cook diner and told a story we got up early on sunday and went fishing i caught a fish i didn't really like ya no veo lo de final okay camping but i learned a lot I really like camping, but I learned a lot. Muy bien. A ver, saben que yo no sé qué sea lo que les, lo que les, les, lo que estorbe ahí, pero bueno, lo voy a hacer un poquito más arriba para que lo puedan ver. Las imágenes de todos modos ya las vieron, así que ahora sí. A ver, Adriana, go ahead. Kelly, I had a great weekend. I went to my best friend, Helen Whitney. She got married. At home, all her friends and family when she looked, she looked fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress. After she ceremony, her parents served served a grateful meal. I'm really happy for her, and I really like her husband, Robert. Mm -hmm. I had a grateful weekend. My friends and I went to to a rock concert. I had a terrible time. It took their horse, not three, horse to drip three. <laughs> I I didn't like the music at all and after she comes her mm -hmm. our car comes her and i no sé cómo se oh pronuncia. ended ended perdón ended ending or car broken down i call my parents and they come and got us we finally got Home um ten this morning I am so tired. Okay. Erin, I had a interesting weekend. I went camping for my first time. My friends took me. We held on Saturday and gone to the campsite. Campsite. Así. Campsite. Ah, campsite. First, we put up the tent. Then we build a free fire. Cook, fire cook, dinner, and tome histories. Mm -hmm. We got up early on Saturday and when finish finishing. Así. Mm -hmm. yes. I caught a fish. I didn't really like camping, but I learned a lot. Okay. Solo sería una cosita, went fishing. Sí, fishing. Sería diferente, ¿verdad? Went fishing, que fuimos a pescar. Pero lo demás, muy bien. Sí, muy, muy buen trabajo. Um, thank you very much. Now we're going to hear Lilian. I think you had your hand raised before, so Lillian. Yo? Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> Kelly, I have a great weekend. I went to my best friend, Helen with Gwyden. Mm -hmm. She got married at home. All her friends and family went. She looked fantastic. Fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress after the ceremony. Ceremonia, no mm -hmm. After the ceremony. The ceremony. Her parents served a wonderful meal. I am really happy for her. And I really like her uh, husband. Mm -hmm. Okay. Robert. I have an awful weekend, my friends, and I went to 
a rock concert. I have a terrible time. I toy talk covers. Took, 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 took. I took three or to drive three there. I didn't like the music at all. And after the concert and mm -hmm. our car our car broke down. I called my parents and they came and got out. We finally got home a day this morning. I am so tired. Very good. Qué terrible con que es la abecedad con que son las vocales cuando está chiquito. Este, Erin, <laughs> perdón. Okay. I have an interesting weekend. I went camping for the first time. My friends took me when left on Saturday and drove to the camp campsite. Pierce went up of the tent. They win bull a fire, cooks dinner and tell a story. Mm -hmm. We go up early on Sunday and went fish. I call a fish. I don't really like camping, but I learning a lot. <laughs> okay, very good. I didn't really like camping, but I learned a lot. And yeah, the only thing it was, once again, fishing. See, ¿Sí? went fishing. Muy bien. Who would like to be next? ¿Quién sería el siguiente? Any of you guys who would like to read uh, next? Oh, yeah, me va a tocar elegir a mí. Okay, let's see. Uh, we are going to hear from Kevin. Okay, Kevin, go ahead when you're ready. Kelly, I had a great, great weekend. I went to my best friend Helen's wedding. She got married at home. All her friends and family went. She looked Fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress. After the ceremony, her parents served a wonderful meal. I'm really happy for her. And I really like her husband, Robert. I had an awful weekend. My friend and I went to, rock, to a rock concert. I had a terrible time. It took three hours to drive there. I didn't like the music at all. And, and after the concert ended, our car broke down. I called my parents and they came and got us. We finally got, we finally got home at 10 this morning. I am so tired. Erin, okay. I had an interesting weekend. I went camping for the first time. My friends took me. We left on Saturday and drove to the campsite. First, we put, we put up the tent. Then we built a fight, cooked that dinner, mm -hmm. and told stories. We got up early on Sunday and went fishing. I caught a fish. I didn't really like camping, but I learned a lot. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Very good job. Uh, okay. So now who's next? Who is the next person? Ya les dije, hoy quiero que os escucharos a la gran mayoría. Sí, mientras más, mejor. Y pues estamos yendo bien, bastante bien, creo, con el tiempo. Así que, let's see. Um, do you take it, Juan, for example? Oh. Okay. I had a great weekend. I went to my best friend, Helen Sweden. She got married at home. All her friends and family went. She looked fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress. After the ceremony, her family served a wonderful meal. I'm really happy for her 
and I really like her husband. I had an awful weekend. My friend and I went to a rock concert. I had a terrible time. It took three hours to get there. I didn't like the music at all. And after the concert ending, our car broke down. I called my parents and they came and got us. We finally got home at 10 this morning. I am so tired. I had an interesting weekend. I went camping for the first time. My friend took me. We left on Saturday and drove to the campsite. Mm -hmm. First, we put up the tent, then we built a fire, cooked a dinner, and told history. We got up early on Sunday and we and went fishing. I caught a fish. I didn't really like camping, but I learned a lot. All right. Very, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, now we're going to hear from Marco. Kelly, I had a great weekend. I went to my best friend Helen's wedding. She got married at Hunt. All her friends and family went. She looked fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress after a ceremony. Her parents served a wonderful meal. I'm really happy for her and I really like her husband, Robert. Mm -hmm. I had an awful weekend. My friends and I went to a rock concert. I had a terrible time. It took three hours to drive there. I didn't like the music at all. And after the concert ended, our car broke down. I called my parents and they came and got us. We finally got home at 10 this morning. I'm so tired. Erin, I had an interesting weekend. I went camping for the first time. My friends took me. We left on Saturday and dropped to the campsite first. We put up the tent, then we built a fire, cooked dinner, and told the stories. We got up early on Sunday and went fishing. I caught a fish. I didn't really like camping, but I learned a lot. Okay, very, very nice. Thank you, thank you. That was very quick also. Very, very good job. Um, Giovanni, I saw that you were uh, trying to read it before. So if you want to give it a shot, you have your chance now. Okay, Kelly. I had a great weekend. I went to my friends, Helen, when she got married, our home, our here friends and family went. She looked fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress after the ceremony. Her parents served a wonderful meal. I'm really happy for her and really like her husband, Robert. I had an awful weekend. My friend and went to rock concert. I had terrible time. It took three, three hours to drive here. I didn't like the music at all and after the concert ended all oh, car broke car broke down mm -hmm. i called my parents and they came our goddess we finally got home and then this morning i am so tired Reading. i had an interesting interesting weekend i went camping for the first time my friends took me we left on Saturday and drove to the camp, campsite. Campsite first. We get up up to the rent. Then they wheeled a fire, cook it, dinner, and told the stories. We got up early on Sunday and went fishing and colored at fishing and didn't really like camping, but I really a lot. I learned a lot. Learned, learned a lot. Learned a lot. All right. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you, um, Giovanni. Now, let's hear probably from Eric. Kelly, I had a great weekend. I went to my best friend Helen's wedding. She got married at home. All her friends and family went. She looked 
fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress. After the ceremony, her parents served a wonderful meal. I'm really happy for her. And I really like her husband. Robert, I had a awful weekend. My friends and I went to a rock concert. I had a terrible, terrible time. It took three hours to drive there. I didn't like the music at all. And after the concert ended, our car broke down. I called my parents and they came and got us. us. We finally got home at 10 this morning. I am so tired. Erin, I had an interesting weekend. I went camping for the first time. My friends took me. We left on Saturday and drove to the campsite. First, we put up the tent. Mm -hmm. Then we built a fire, cooked diner, dinner, and told a story. We got up early on Sunday and went fishing. I caught a fish. I didn't really like camping, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Very nice. Very, very good. Thank you very much, Eric. Ahora, saben que no me acuerdo si ya lo mencioné esto, pero hay una situación con ese error que ya un par eh, más o menos nos, nos corregimos, pero también íbamos cometiéndolo en decir diner, sí, a la hora de hablar acerca de del diner, ¿verdad? Eh, diner es una palabra que sí existe, o sea, sí es algo que ustedes pueden decir, solamente tiene una N, eso sí. Y es una palabra que normalmente se utiliza para referirse como, uy, perdón, como a un estilo de um, comedor, ¿sí? Entonces, diner, o sea, sí se puede usar, pero es para hablar acerca de comedores. Cuando hablamos acerca de la cena, que es exactamente el tema, ¿verdad?, que se está tratando acá, en ese caso solo sería diner. Muy bien, vamos a tener a la última persona, así que, a ver, ¿quién quisiera ser el último? Aquí no los voy a, no los voy a obligar, así que tell me, guys, who would like to be the last one on reading these paragraphs? Okay, uh, I think we have Ingrid. So go ahead, Ingrid. Okay, Kelly, I had a great weekend. I went to my best friend, Helen Whitten. She got married at home and her friends and family win. She looked fantastic. She wore a beautiful dress. After the ceremony, her parents served a one and uh, a waterfall. I am really happy for her, for him. And I really like her, her husband. Okay. Robert. Teacher, <laughs> lo he estado ensayando y lo he querido decir así como más rápido, pero no puedo, ¿verdad? Está bien, no hay problema. Siento, sorry. No, okay. uh, Robert, I had a, 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 a full weekend. My, my friends and I went to rock concert. I had a terrible time. It, uh, it, took, it, it took three mm -hmm. hours. To drive me, I didn't like the music at at I and after the concert. Acá como dice Ender, Ender ¿cómo yes. se pronuncia? Ender. Ender. Mm -hmm. Ender. Or car brow, or car or car brow drunk. I ca I pay my parents and they come and go out with. Finally, got home at 10 this morning. I saw as I, I am so tired. I'm so tired. I had an interesting weekend. I went camping for tea for the first time. My friends took me. 
we left on Saturday and drove to the camping first. We, I, we, come first, on. we put up first. We put up the rent. The, we build, build a fire cookie dinner and tell a story. We go, we go up early on Sunday and we can fish. I found a fish I didn't really like camping, but I learned a lot. Okay, very nice. Thank you very much. Very good job. Ahora sí, vamos a ver. So, you guys did great, ¿sí? Muy bien, muy bien hecho. Obviamente, ¿verdad? Es algo en lo cual, como les digo, no se trabaja muy a menudo, así que es entendible si por momentos, ¿verdad? Se nos lengua la traba, como diríamos. Eh, pero igual, buen trabajo, ¿sí? Es algo que los animo a seguir trabajando, a seguir haciéndolo. O sea, cuando ustedes puedan, ¿verdad? Consíganse algún párrafo en inglés en internet y pues lo leen así en voz alta, porque eso nos ayuda bastante, más que todo con las cuestiones de la fluidez, ¿ok? con, el, con el sentido, ¿verdad? De ir aprendiendo a pronunciar un poco más rápido. Tal vez no les voy a decir que de buenas a primeras van a aprender el vocabulario que, que lean, o sea, eso va a tomar quizás un poco de tiempo pero al menos con las cuestiones de la fluidez, esto nos da un poco más de confianza. Porque cuando hacemos speaking nada más, o sea, que alguien me dice, ¿verdad? Explíqueme esto, contésteme esto, otro. Eh, tenemos el problema de que a veces no sabemos qué decir. O sea, las palabras no vienen necesariamente así rápido a la mente. Entonces, y no me recuerdo cuál es la palabra que yo tenía que usar. Con la lectura tenemos esa facilidad. Las palabras ya están ahí. Lo único que yo tengo que hacer es enfocarme en pronunciar de forma correcta. Ahora, si tengo dudas, si por ejemplo en algún momento cualquiera de los maestros que ustedes van a tener más adelante, ustedes escuchan que dijeron una palabra de forma distinta, traten de buscarlo, ¿sí? Eh, o sea, en internet es muy sencillo hoy en día, o sea, ustedes en Google simplemente pues, escriben la palabra que quieren saber y en muchas ocasiones, no estoy diciendo que en todas, pero en muchas ocasiones las palabras aparecen ahí, ¿verdad? O sea, con sus símbolos o signos fonéticos, y también incluso con la posibilidad de poder escuchar cómo se pronuncia esa palabra. Así que, o sea, es algo que les recom recomiendo mucho que hagan, que intenten hacerlo muy a menudo. Y de esa forma, o sea, van a poder ir eh, desarrollando una mejor fluidez. Y cuando ya después también adquiramos, ¿verdad?, el conocimiento del vocabulario necesario, pues ya vamos a poder hablar más rápido. Así que, o sea, la lectura... Eh, más que todo así, en, en voz alta, es algo muy importante. O sea, algo que deberíamos practicar bastante, porque créanme que eso les va a ayudar un montón. O sea, ustedes encuentran cualquier libro, cualquier párrafo aquí y allá, y traten de hacerlo, ¿verdad? Traten de leerlo en voz alta, porque también eso incluso lo, nos va a ayudar a generar confianza con el idioma. O sea, yo me voy a poder escuchar a mí mismo cómo lo leo. Muy diferente a cuando estoy tratando simplemente de hacer un monólogo, porque, o sea, es otro de los consejos que a veces se dan. O sea, ustedes elijan un tema y hablen acerca de ese tema. Pero eso sería como para niveles un poco quizá más avanzados, porque si no, lo que puede suceder con el monólogo es que muy a menudo me voy a enfocar en las palabras que yo conozco y solo me voy a quedar con esas palabras y repitiendo esas mismas palabras todo el tiempo y pues a la larga eso no nos va a beneficiar tanto, ¿verdad? Porque básicamente vamos a estar practicando solo lo mismo y lo mismo y lo mismo. Entonces mejor la lectura. Así que, o sea, si gustan tomar el consejo, es algo que les recomiendo mucho que puedan hacer o practicar más adelante. Bueno, ayer les hablaba acerca de esto, así que creo que no va a ser algo en lo que debamos ¿verdad? pararnos tanto tiempo, eh, lo que serían los, las oraciones con eh, B. O sea, ayer teníamos preguntas en las cuales utilizábamos el auxiliar DIT y yo pues me recuerdo que les comenté un poco acerca de cómo se usa en este caso específico, ¿verdad?, eh, la, la, la cuestión del, del was y el where, ¿sí? Cuando utilizamos esto, pues casi siempre la oración está basada solo en esto, al igual que en el presente, siempre que yo digo she is lucky por decir algo, o sea, la oración se basa en eso, no se basa en ninguna otra acción, en ningún otro, otro, otro verbo. El verbo principal va a ser was o va a ser where. Así que lo demás que se hace simplemente es explicar un poco la situación, ¿verdad? Así que bueno, algunos de los ejemplos, ¿cómo funcionan estos? Ya se los decía también ayer. Was es un poco más fácil de utilizar porque, o sea, no necesariamente, eh, o sea, was se va a, a utilizar para algo más allá de los singulares. O sea, los, todos los singulares básicamente van a ser utilizados con, con was. El único que 
sí tiene verdad esa pequeña característica distinta es el caso del you o sea el you singular que se utiliza where o sea con you siempre se utiliza where pero aparte de eso bueno sí hay un caso de hecho el broken English o el inglés quebrado el inglés así no mal educado pero quizás el que no sigue sigue 100% las reglas ese tipo de inglés sí ustedes pueden decir you was ok o sea, habrá casos, habrá momentos en los cuales ustedes escuchen que alguna persona diga you was. No es lo correcto desde un punto de vista gramatical, claro que no, pero es la costumbre, ¿verdad? La forma en la cual algunas personas lo, lo utilizan. Antes era mucho más común que el you was fuese usado por personas de, personas de color, digamos. Ya hoy en día no. O sea, hoy en día es mucho más general la utilización del you was porque pues muchas personas dicen, ¿verdad? ¿Por qué? Eh, se tiene que hacer esa diferencia. O sea, si, si es un singular, si simplemente estoy hablando contigo, entonces sería, debería ser was. Así que, pues, es algo que, que se usa en ocasiones en Estados Unidos, más que todo, y, pues, no debería asustarnos, ¿verdad?, cuando, cuando nos encontramos con ese caso. Bueno, eh, tenemos entonces, I was born in Korea, ¿sí?, Estamos simplemente explicando una situación personal. Yo nací en Corea. O si ustedes quieren ponerse literales a traducir palabra por palabra, sería verdad, yo fui nacido en Corea. Pero pues no necesariamente es lo que estamos tratando de hacer, sino interpretar también lo que se dice. I was born in Korea. Uh, el negativo con contracción, porque normalmente se dice así con contracción, no vamos a decir I was not, a menos, como les he dicho ya en ocasiones también pasadas, si queremos hacer un énfasis en esa oración, si queremos que esa oración se escuche como más importante, como que ese punto de la negación sea algo, o sea, pero relevante, en ese caso sí, ¿verdad? Podemos decir was not. I was not born in the U.S. O sea, no nací en Estados Unidos. Pero si no es así, si no es el caso, si simplemente es la oración así regular, entonces podemos decir wasn't. I wasn't born in the U.S. Así que esa sería el, el, la contraparte negativa. So, I was born in Korea. I wasn't born in the U.S. Aquí, por ejemplo, ¿cómo podría yo decir was not? ¿O en qué momento recomiendo yo que se pueda utilizar el was not? Si alguien es insistente, ¿verdad? En decirme solo porque tengo tal vez, o sea, qué sé yo, eh, la cultura misma de Estados Unidos y hablo inglés como si nací en Estados Unidos y todo. Eh, y me diga, no, you were born in the U.S., you were for sure born in the U.S., I cannot believe you, you were born outside of the U.S. y todo eso, ustedes pueden decir, I was not born in the U.S. Sí, o sea, es como para asegurarle, ¿verdad? Con fuerza, no nací en Estados Unidos. Por más que creas, por más que querrás adivinar, I wasn't. Sí, yo no nací acá. Siguiente, por ejemplo, tenemos, you were pretty young. You were pretty young. Sí, estabas muy joven. You were, sí, estabas. You were pretty young. Estabas muy joven. El contrario negativo. You weren't very old. You weren't very old. O sea, o si no, you were not very old. Sí, pero eso es menos común. You weren't sería el más común. You weren't very old. Then we have. She was 17. She was 17. Sí, ella tenía o ella, bueno, sabemos que con la edad en inglés se utiliza el verbo be, así que, o sea, podríamos tratar de decir, ¿verdad? Eh, ella estaba con, 20, con 17, perdón. So, she was 17, ella tenía 17. O sea, digo porque la costumbre o lo que muchas personas a veces piensan, ¿verdad? Es traducir el has, porque has es lo que significa tener, pero no, aquí no vamos a utilizar has. Entonces, she was 17, ella tenía 17. She wasn't in college. She wasn't in college. Ella no estaba en la universidad. ¿sí? She wasn't in college. Ella no estaba en la universidad. Then we have, we were born in the same year. We were born in the same year. Aquí tenemos ya un plural, nosotros. ¿sí? Nosotros. Nosotros nacimos en el mismo país. We were born in the same, perdón, el mismo, en el mismo año. Sí. We were born in the same year. We were born in the same year. Nacimos en el mismo año. We weren't born in the same country. We weren't born in the same country. No nacimos en el mismo país. Aquí es donde se mencionaba el país. We weren't born in the same 
country. Entonces tenemos verdad que esto es lo negativo, si ¿sí? no nacimos en el mismo país. Luego tenemos, they were in Korea in 1998. They were in Korea in 1998. Ellos estaban en Corea en 1998. Luego tenemos, they weren't in the U.S. in 1998. They weren't in the U.S. in 1998. O sea, ellos estaban en Corea en 1998. Ellos no estaban en Estados Unidos en 1998. Así que como les digo, esta será la forma, ¿verdad? Para poder decir cosas de ser o estar, ¿sí? Ser o estar en el pasado. Y esta será la forma de negar cosas de ser o estar en el pasado. Depende claramente también, o sea, es una cosa que creo que lo voy a repetir hasta el cansancio también. Eh, si utilizamos el nombre de alguien, o sea, si yo en lugar de decir she, yo digo Elisa, ¿sí? O sea, es normal. Elisa wasn't in college. Elisa was 17. Uh, aquí sí, ¿verdad? Si lo utilicé una vez ya Elisa en una oración previa... Ya suena raro si yo digo una vez más Elisa. O sea, entonces por eso sería She wasn't in college. Pero eh, si, yo, si ustedes gustan reemplazar, en lugar de utilizar este pronombre, utilizar el nombre de alguien, se puede hacer. No necesariamente se va a tener que modificar, ¿verdad? El was. No es porque yo ponga el nombre aquí, Carlos, yo voy a tener que decir Carlos Word. No. Se va a decir siempre Carlos was 17. Si es singular. Si yo dijese, por ejemplo, Carlos en David, ese es plural. Ese sería reemplazable. O el, el pronombre que reemplazaríamos sería they. Porque estamos hablando de ellos, ¿verdad? De Carlos y David. O sea, no estoy incluido yo, no está incluido nadie más, sino que ellos. Entonces sería they. Carlos y David. Um, ¿Qué sé yo? Were very tall. Sí, Carlos y David eran muy altos. Entonces eso es un ejemplo. Eh, pues igual, haciendo uso, ¿verdad?, de un, un plural y en ese caso, pues siempre utilizamos el where. Ahora, en lo siguiente son las preguntas. Las preguntas también ayer, o sea, yo les mencionaba ya un poco más, más en orden, ¿verdad?, porque era el tema principal, ¿cómo se usan las preguntas? Tenemos dos estilos aquí ya un poco más establecidos. Están las yes, no questions, que son estas de acá, y están las double H questions, que son las que vienen buscando información un poco más específica. Ya les decía que, por ejemplo, si alguien me pregunta con were you, o sea, eso es siempre normal, ¿verdad? Si alguien me pregunta algo acerca de mí, yo voy a contestar I. Entonces, si a pesar que en, el, en el, la pregunta diga were you, yo voy a contestar con I was, porque esa es la forma correcta de hacerlo. Entonces, were you born in the U.S.? Podemos decir, yes, I was, o no, I wasn't, ¿sí? O sea, ¿naciste en Estados Unidos? Sí o no. Was your brother born in 1984? Sí, nació tu hermano en el 1984. You can say, yes, he was, o no, he wasn't, ¿sí? Sí, lo, sí nació en ese año, o no nació en ese año. Um, luego tenemos, were your parents born in, in uh, Incheon? Were your parents born in Incheon? Yes, they were, no, they weren't, ¿sí? Sí, fue, sí. ¿Fueron nacidos ahí o no nacieron ahí? Y luego las double H, que esas son las más complejas. Sería, por ejemplo, where were you born? ¿Sí? ¿Dónde naciste? Si alguien me pregunta esto, pues yo puedo, puedo contestar. I was born in... Y luego... Sorry. Ok, sorry, guys. Um, so, where were you born? ¿Dónde naciste? We can say, I was born in Korea. O I was born in El Salvador. I was born in a specific place. Donde sea que ustedes hayan nacido, you can say it like that. Then the next one, when was he born? ¿Cuándo nació él? O sea, esta pregunta es acerca de alguien más. Así que, when was he born? He was born in 1985. Aquí tenemos, o sea, bastante similar, ¿verdad? Thank you, Kevin. Um, so, very, very similar. Yes, he was born. Él nació en el 85. And then we have, what city? Were they born in? What city were they born in? Entonces, es they, yo contesto con they. They were born in Seoul. La estructura es bastante similar a lo que se tiene en el presente, así que eso no debería confundirnos mucho, ¿verdad? O sea, eh, es algo que simplemente lo que tenemos que hacer es entender que es en el pasado y seguir esa misma línea. 
pero bueno, mañana podemos tener chance para poder practicar un poco las preguntas del WH en el uh, pasado. Pero por ahora, well, guys, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for the good reading and the participation you had this evening. Tomorrow we're going to have our second last class, so we're getting very close to the end. I hope you have an amazing night, and I also hope I'll see you tomorrow again. So have a good night, and see you tomorrow, people. Bye-bye.